Welcome back to Mid East In Depth. Today we are considering the threat of ISIS from various viewpoints across the press. Michael Young comments in the Daily Star that it was only a matter of time before an American official would use the ISIS stick against the former National Security Agency contractor Edward Snowden. He comments, whether Snowden had leaked on US surveillance capacities or not, ISIS would certainly have assumed that such capacities existed and adapted accordingly. He explains it was the disastrous policies of the Obama administration that partly allowed ISIS to thrive. It was never about the United States sending troops to Syria, as Obama falsely depicted in his options in Syria. ISIS grew because the U.S. failed to properly evaluate a conflict that had spun out of control. He adds, the United States has spent the last decade developing a huge and invasive infrastructure to fight terrorism, but all ISIS has done is to show the profound limitations of the American efforts. He concludes, the NSA's appetite for money is insatiable, so one expects it to, 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 to target Snowden. Chris Doyle comments in The Telegraph that the Islamic State will never succeed as long as most Muslims are against it. Having lost in Kobani, despite a huge effort being bombed from the air by the US-led coalition and pegged back largely by Kurdish forces in both Iraq and Syria, statehood looks increasingly frail. He adds, but the slow death of the state will not be the extirpation of ISIL, the movement. This period has allowed the accumulation of great wealth, resources, fighters and expertise, as well as a massive global profile. He explains, if the state fails, it will return to being a far more dangerous non-state actor than it was a year ago. Do not forget that ISIL is the just the latest regress regressive evolution of an in Al-Qaeda Iraq. And it can still pose as the champion of Sunni Muslims who feel excluded and marginalized. Its brand will remain powerful. He states, perhaps more Muslims could confront extremism, not just condemn it, but for many of them it carries a great risk. Like a Sicilian speaking out against the Mafia, the costs can be fatal. ISIL has majored in fear and intimidation. Doyle concludes, but the essential reality that Western leaders in particular fail to realize and build on is that Muslims can be and should be our greatest ally in the struggle. Encouraged rather than chastised and humiliated, they can take the lead. For more updates, please visit levant.tv and subscribe to Mid East In Depth on iTunes. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.